So I just got out of the follow-up visit with neurosurgery. It was supposed to be a six-week follow-up, but it took them almost eight weeks to schedule me. I think he forgot to schedule me, so I had to send them a message. Yeah, so the visit went really well. He showed me the tumor uh, that was there before and what it looked like after surgery. Here, when we saw this enhancement here, we didn't see anything there that looked like tumor. And in fact, probably it's a, a small piece of blood small blood with some surgery cell gel foam that we put there. The latest scans did not show any recurrence, which I don't think I would expect this soon, but um, the swelling and the area has really improved. And what he said was that it would take a lot of time for the nerve function to come back because they had to manipulate the nerve. So the symptoms that I have currently are still a tiny bit of swallowing, it's not like 100%, but I would say it's about 95%. My vocal cord on the right side is still paralyzed, so they're going to do a procedure to help that, and that's gonna be coming up in April. And then I also have a little bit of weakness on my right side, like if I try to raise my arm up, it doesn't really go all the way up without having some pain and a little bit of weakness. And I noticed this when I went to the gym the other day and I was doing overhead presses. So that will also improve. And then I also had a, a little bit of a facial paralysis, especially after the surgery, where my right side of the face was weaker than the left side but they said that that's also going to come back. Basically, they had to manipulate a bunch of the cranial nerves. So the cranial nerve seven is the facial nerve, and that's the one that, um, you know, is for the function of uh, my facial muscles. So that one, they really had to push out. And then I have the cranial nerve 11 that innervates the neck muscles and so forth. And I also have the vagus nerve and there's like a branch off of the vagus nerve that's called the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And that's what's responsible for swallowing and my vocal cords. And so they said that neurologically, it could take minutes for you to develop symptoms but to recover from it could take up to a year or two so the nerves come back really slow uh, but you know but that's hopeful because I am just making sure that they didn't damage any nerve or nick it or cut it or anything they did say that my hypoglossal nerve the one that innervates my tongue muscles like if you can see when I stick out my tongue that it's deviated it's been weak like that and um, the whole nerve was encompassed in the tumor. They had to remove the whole thing and so that nerve function is not going to come back, sadly. But I didn't notice much of a difference after the surgery in terms of the tongue function. I think I've gotten used to it and I'm okay with it. It was really bothering me in the beginning when I had to eat and I had a lot of jaw pain from it, but I think just over the time it, I got used to it. So overall, it's really great, the result, and I'm ready for my radiation with the proton therapy, which again, he reiterated to me that it was really important to do that. So I'm glad I made the decision to do it because, you know, um, I wasn't really sure if that was really something I wanted to do in addition since my body has been through so much already. But with the plan that I have coming up with the diet, plus I'm going to be adding fasting for a few days before that. And then I'm also going to add some repurposed drugs, which I will talk to you guys about a little bit later. Hey guys, so I am just getting ready right now to head out. Today is uh, my late day working, so I usually work from 3 to 10.30 on Wednesdays, and then Thursdays I have off. I used to work 40 hours a week, but then I cut down to 36, and now I am down to 32, and I just wanted some extra time to myself because most of the time I have to take off work to go to appointments anyway, so since I have one free day, I can at least have some time to myself on the day that I work late. And then Thursdays are usually reserved for all of my appointments and my infusions and my scans, etc. So I will be taking you with me to the coffee shop today 
and I'm going to hang out there for a little bit and do some research and do some work and uh, treat myself to a nice latte or something and I love sitting at coffee shops just because of the ambience of it and I work from home so I really don't get out that much okay guys I just got to the coffee shop so I'm gonna head in Hey guys, so uh, the coffee shop was a little bit too crowded and I was going to record in there, but um, I still feel pretty awkward. So uh, I decided to just record in my car instead. So I have scans coming up. I actually already had some scans done. I had my MRI of the brain and MRI of the cervical spine the other day, and I got those results. And then I have my PET scan coming up tomorrow. So the MRI of the brain and the cervical spine showed stable bone metastasis. And I have them throughout my skull and throughout my vertebras and the, and the C-spine. But there was this one area in the thoracic spine. And they said that it was a leptomeningeal enhancement at the T2 to T4 spinal canal so that's like not on the bone but it's in the spinal canal at the thoracic spine level and this is new because it wasn't there last time i'm a little bit freaked out by it i'm not sure what it is i actually don't really know what causes it but from what i saw it looks like it could be from infection inflammation trauma or it could be from metastasis my feeling is that it may be something related to the surgery because that's not really characteristic of my cancer. And usually I don't really get any areas that are involved like that. And this kind of came right after the surgery. So I'm wondering if it has anything to do with that. We sent a message to my neurosurgeon and my oncologist. So I'm going to have to wait to see what they suggest. And if we need any further scans, like another MRI of the thoracic spine to see what's going on. And so that is making me a little bit nervous, but I hope it's nothing serious. Tomorrow I have my PET scan, and again, I'm pretty anxious about that. Um, the last PET scan that I had showed drastic improvements, but this time I have been feeling a lot of pain in my right third rib, where I have about a three centimeter tumor there and it shrank by maybe like five millimeters last time but it was still pretty big after i got sick from all of the neurological symptoms that i was having and i wasn't able to eat or exercise or function like i normally would and i pretty much went off my whole diet and anti-cancer routine for the past two months well, since January, basically, uh, when I started developing the symptoms and then I had to have surgery and then I had to recover from the surgery. So I'm finally back to where I was before that. And I have started to clean up my diet for the past few weeks, but still the pain has been going on ever since then. And it definitely is still there. And so I have a feeling that it's either growing or... It's definitely not shrank, so we will see exactly what the damage is, but usually I'm pretty spot on when it comes to my scans because I've had them so many times, and, you know, it just made me reflect back on my journey and how many times I've had ups and downs and how that's affected me. It's uh, getting a little bit easier now because I feel like so many things have happened in the past year that I've gone through that it's almost just like okay what's the next thing and just bring on the challenge so that I can just get over it you know I, I truly feel like God put me in this position so that I can experiment on myself and then that way I can share all of my knowledge and experiences with you so that you don't have to go through the same thing as me or hopefully it'll help someone be able to 
use what they've learned from my videos, uh, whether that's mental or emotional or physical. So I think I am pretty anxious about these scans, but at the same time, I feel like no matter what happens, I have the tools and the knowledge to be able to tackle this. And I'm pretty confident that I can do that. So since my last video, when I talked about doing a ketogenic diet along with proton therapy radiation, it's really been on my heart and my mind to revisit the mechanisms of cancer as a metabolic disease and the role of repurposed drugs. So in my almost eight years now of having cancer, I've learned so much about alternative treatments that are available, and it can be really overwhelming sometimes. It's like having information overload and there's no way that I'll have time to try everything, you know? Um, and also not every treatment is right for me or can be beneficial for me. And I have to be really careful not to harm myself in the process. I usually will ask for divine guidance and then I'll follow my intuition when it comes to choosing the right treatment plan at the appropriate times, depending on what's going on in my cancer journey. And I guess it's worked out so far because I'm still here and I hope to stick around longer so that I can share all these things with you. My friend once told me, you're like a cockroach, you'll never die. And I was a little bit taken back at first, but after I read about cockroaches, it seems that we have a lot more in common than I thought. <laughs> anyway, so the metabolic theory is pretty popular nowadays because of Dr. Thomas Seyfried, who many of you have commented about on my channel here. And I have been following him for a long time, and just like other people that uh, are like Dr. Nasha Winters, who wrote the book, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer, and Jane McLellan, who wrote How to Starve Cancer, where she talks a lot more about repurposed drugs. And I also came across a more recent book that was written by Dr. Jeffrey Dack called Cracking, called Cracking Cancer Toolkit, which I haven't really read entirely, but I am using it for reference. So if you're not familiar with these people, Dr. Nasha Winters had stage four ovarian cancer, and Jane McLellan had multiple cancers, uh, cervical, lung, and blood cancers, and they both used the metabolic approach to healing their cancers, and they're still in remission today. I'm gonna briefly explain the metabolic theory of cancer. So in the cell, you have the nucleus, and then you have the cytoplasm. The mainstream belief is that cancer is a genetic disease, otherwise known as the somatic theory of cancer, which involves the mutations that's in the nucleus that then turns on these genes that lead to the development of cancer. But the metabolic theory of cancer talks about the dysfunction in the cytoplasm, which is outside of the nucleus of the cell, and this is where the mitochondria is. So basically the dysregulation in the mitochondria or the cytoplasm can lead to a downstream effect to the nucleus that then turns on these genes to cause cancer. So it's kind of like which one, you know, came first, the nucleus or the cytoplasm. So it's kind of like the argument between that. And the dysfunction of the cytoplasm can be caused by things that will bring oxidative stress to the cells like aging or inflammation and environmental toxins. I consulted with my integrative medicine doctor the other day and we decided that I would add some repurposed drugs to my treatment plan. If you don't know what repurposed drugs are, these are basically drugs that have already been approved for use for many years for a certain medical condition, um, but now they're being used for other potential indications like cancer. So there's a huge list of these drugs that have been studied and are undergoing more research now. And I've used a lot of them and I'm on some right now. Um, but before I share what I'm doing, I just want to reiterate that I'm just only sharing what I'm doing with you and the reason why I'm doing it. And um, I'm definitely not giving medical advice. So it's important to talk with your doctors before you start any treatments to make sure that it's right for you and that it's safe for you, okay? 
So the drugs that I'm going to add are these anti-parasitic drugs, namely mebendazole, niclosamide, and ivermectin. And the idea is that parasites and cancer cells share the same energy production pathway. So anti-parasitic drugs target the mitochondria and many pathways that lead to anti-cancer activity. I'm going to make a separate video to talk more in depth about these mechanisms, but for the purposes of this video, I just want to mention that the reason why I chose these drugs is because they're going to work synergistically with immunotherapy, which I'm already on, and the radiation that I will be doing. Um, and these effects should be even more powerful with fasting and the ketogenic therapeutic diet which I plan to start, and they're both technically considered metabolic therapies. So the idea is to weaken the tumor cells and deprive it of the fuel source that it uses by fasting and uh, maintaining the therapeutic ketosis state, and then hitting it with the radiation as well as the repurposed drugs to really kill it off while uh, trying to support the healthy cells. So I think I have a pretty good plan going and I'm pretty nervous for my scans and I could use some prayers coming my way and I am pretty hopeful that with whatever I'm doing, no matter what the results are, it's going to be fine and I'll figure it out some way or somehow even if the results are not good, um, but I'm just praying for nothing too crazy and something that is manageable that I can deal with. Um, but I think that the most dangerous lesion in the skull area is gone now. So even if the rib tumor grew a little bit, the area is not as bad. So I'll figure something out to, to do for it. So thank you for tuning in and for listening. And I will see you in my next video. Okay, bye.